So before we do anything more with colors in our fragment shader, there is one thing that we have to get uh, right, and that is gamma correction. And this is a really, really confusing thing uh, for beginners. And actually, if you try to figure it out, that's a rabbit hole. Basically, you will learn a lot about uh, history of monitors and uh, physics and how human eye works and stuff like that. Uh, but I didn't really <laughs> dive very deep into that. Uh, I just looked at this um, article here on Learn OpenGL, which is, by the way, an amazing resource. It is about OpenGL, of course, but uh, actually you can easily port stuff uh, from OpenGL and GLSL to um, SDL as well. Anyway, uh, the problem with our colors currently is that we assume that they are nicely linearly uh, distributed, right? So like uh, 0 0.5 is half bright and 0 is full darkness and 1 is full brightness. Uh, and unfortunately, that's not exactly the case. The problem is that all the monitors for all the historical and physical and whatever reasons, before actually outputting your color, they apply this uh, gamma function, uh, which is like uh, just a scale to the power of 2.2 roughly, which can be configurable per monitor, but uh, this is the standard. And that means that uh, the actual colors are darker than before, right? So like if you have 0 0.5, that will actually be somewhere like 0 0.2. That also means that the artists, when they look at their pixels in their art programs, uh, they look at the darkened colors, right? Uh, because their monitor applies this function for them. And when they want to get a color that is half bright, uh, they actually don't store a value of 0 0.5 uh, because like if you look at this graph, uh, here would be the 0 0.5 and that would be actually here on this gamma graph, right? The one that uh, is like, this is the number that is needed to basically display the um, half bright uh, color, right? So 0 0.5 would be somewhere here and the value of the pixel is actually closer to 0 0.73 or something like that. So this is how um, the uh, textures are stored mostly. And this color space is called sRGB, right? And for us, this is a problem because uh, these numbers are not really nicely linearly progressing, right? Uh, from the full darkness to the full brightness. And fortunately, it's a pretty simple fix uh, what we can do to make them linear is just to apply the gamma to the pixel uh, ourselves. And how do we do that is basically, let's actually take a look at how it looks currently. And this looks fine. Uh, this is because the textures that we get from the texture are in this sRGB format, and then they are just darkened and we don't do any processing because like even this multiplication, we always use just white color and if we would use something else, that would be a problem. But if we uh, move this out, like float for color, and use like that, here we can actually process it and convert it to this linear space by applying uh, the gamma correction, right? And that would be simply color RGB because alpha is special. It doesn't need the scaling. We are talking only about the RGB colors. Uh, we can just say power of color dot RGB by 2.2, right? Exactly as the monitor does it. Now, if we run this, uh, you see that the colors are much, much darker. And this is because basically we apply this correction twice because like this will be the linear color, uh, but the monitor will treat it as this sRGB color, right? And we'll apply the gamma correction again and uh, it will darken it even more. So that is the problem. And how you deal with that? Well, basically before you apply the final color, let's say that we have a final color, you basically modify it again by the inverse of that power. So like color RGB equals pow color RGB one divided by 2.2, right? Of course, that should be a final color and not color. I'm sorry. Now, if we run this, 
we will get the previous result exactly as what it was before but the difference is that this color after processing is nicely linearly scaled so the uh, half bright pixels will have the values of 0 0.5 which is what we want when we are doing some processing like for example lighting calculations right because this is where we would uh, change the pixel color so here the colors are linear so that is the very basic theory about it but the problem is that doing this is kind of very annoying right we have to always remember about this we could of course have some functions for that but fortunately uh, SDL and all the graphics drivers uh, nowadays provide uh, some support for that to basically automate that and there are two parts to that right one is the texture format so the texture sampling and another one is the swap chain texture format basically also called swap chain composition in SDL so let's talk about the texture format so if we take a look at this texture format page it says that for sampler use the following formats are universally supported right and this R8, G8, B8, A8 unorm is what we were using if you remember if we search for that unorm this is what we are using for the texture that we are loading right but if we actually take a look at the supported texture there is a variant of the same texture but with this sRGB prefix and that basically means that the texture is assumed to be stored in the sRGB format so the non-linear uh, pixel values and when we are interacting with it uh, from the shader like sampling for example it will be automatically converted to the linear space by basically applying the same function here so maybe let's comment this out then go here and just add the postfix like this right sRGB so now if we run this we will get the same result that everything looks pretty correct so this is how you deal with the texture sampling and texture access in general we can remove that so basically now it's all linear and this is the final thing now how you do that in SDL is uh, by using this uh, set GPU swap chain parameters function and that allows you to supply this uh, swap chain composition argument uh, which is this enum and by default is SDR which is, stands for standard dynamic range so the uh, swap chain is in this format pixels are stored in sRGB uh, this is what we were using right uh, but this kind of means that when we write the pixels to it they need to be converted to this sRGB format right and this is exactly what we do with this um, in inverse power function but we can avoid doing that by providing this SDR linear composition which will assume that uh, the pixel are uh, still in sRGB in the memory but when accessing in the shaders uh, it will be converted to the linear with this transfer function I know it's very confusing but uh, thankfully it's very easy to use and actually like if we comment this out and then search for the init function and somewhere here we can say SDL set GPU swap chain parameters and here we specify the device the window and here we say SDR linear right and the fourth parameter is the present mode which we don't care about uh, for now uh, this is about uh, vsync and tearing and whatnot and the default value is vsync you can read about uh, this some more and as usual this returns bool that we can basically just assert by the way maybe we should write our own assert for SDL that in case of the error will uh, at least print the SDL error uh, maybe something for later but now if we run this you can see that the color of the tractor is fine but uh, the clear color and also the colors of the imgui are kind of washed out they are very bright and the reason for that is that the colors that we use for clearing and also what dear imgui uses are actually in the sRGB format and not the linear format and our swap chain composition now expects uh, proper linear colors right so what we want to do here is simply apply the function for that so like linalk power there's this nice function that works on uh, vectors 2.2 
like this, right? And this will already give us the proper color that we were using uh, before, but maybe it doesn't really make sense to do this conversion from this color, which is sRGB. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. So maybe we could just, I don't know, just pre-calculate those values with Python or something. So 0 0.2 uh, would be 0 0.23, right? Something like this. And 0 0.4 would be around 133, right? So 133. Now we can remove all this stuff, fix the syntax error. And now we can run and see the same color, uh, but this is the color in the linear format. And actually this video, in my opinion, in linear space uh, kind of makes uh, more sense. So if we, for example, change our inspector to display the float values instead of the uh, byte values, right? We can say float here and just take a look at it here. We have uh, just a little bit of blue. So this is actually very, very dark. Like if we remove the green component fully and then we try to crank up blue to halfway there, it, it is much, much, much brighter. And it's like 0 0.4 that we were using before is much, much brighter than uh, what we are using now. And if you go up to the one, it's like almost uh, light blue, right? And this value that we are using now, which is uh, 1.33 is kind of much, much closer uh, to our uh, blue brightness. And also like we are just adding a little bit of green to make it more uh, nice to look at, I guess. So yeah, this is about this one. And for the Imgui problem that uh, we still have, right? This UI is still kind of uh, very bright and washed out and not the colors that we were seeing before. Uh, well, there's a lot of discussion and a lot of different PRs and whatnot uh, for Imgui itself. And there's still to this day, no consensus on how to actually fix this. Uh, how to make it configurable. And there is actually uh, multiple ways to deal with that. Like if we take a look at the Imgui uh, SDL3 GPU back and shaders, we can see that the shader is really, really simple, right? It just takes an in color and multiplies it, right? It doesn't care in which color space the colors are, right? It just processes it like this. And we are just kind of know that uh, the colors that are used for the style are in sRGB. So we can simply convert all them to the linear space uh, for the drawing. So if we go into init imgui, right somewhere here, we can get the style that we that is used by default, right? So style equals im get style. And then we can simply iterate over all the colors in style colors, which is like just a fixed array of colors. And we can simply apply the conversion function here, right? So our RGB equals in out power exactly like we did before. Color RGB 2.2, right? And if we run this now, the colors are fine, right? and all these colors are in the linear color space. So that kind of makes sense to us. Now, I'm not sure if this is the correct solution. Uh, maybe it's not really because uh, like all the speakers, for example, that do the hue and saturation and value, maybe they need some internal conversions applied and that, but um, I would say that is good enough for us because we can pick some colors and then they are what they see, like this color and this color are actually the same. So this is fine uh, for now, and I will leave it like this. One last thing that I wanna show, if you take a look at um, render draw data here, uh, is that there is a, an optional argument that is a pipeline, which you can actually supply, and that will be used uh, for rendering all the MGUI SDL instead of the pipeline that they have built in itself.
So basically that means that what you could also do is uh, provide your own custom pipeline and you can basically find how they create the pipeline. So like create GPU graphics pipeline here and you can simply port all the stuff to Odin and maybe provides your own shaders or something with some custom transfer functions if you want more control over that. So that is also a possibility. Uh, but as I said, for now, I will not do any of that. And yeah, we can remove this. And now all the colors are linear and the shaders only operate with linear colors, uh, which is much, much simpler to work with, right? And finally, hopefully we can start working with uh, some color processing in future. So hopefully that was useful and not too confusing and stay tuned.